Well, hello and welcome to the live stream of Light the Fire again. My name's Andrew and this is... Evelina. And we are your hosts for the live stream. We're so happy to have you joining us. We're here in Pensacola and we really believe that the Lord is going to move in such a powerful way. God has appointed this time for you. So join us all week. We're going to be live streaming at live.cfan.org. That's live.cfan.org. And we believe God has got something special for you, but also for your friends. So would you share this live stream right now? Share it on your social media. Text it to your friends. Email it. Do whatever you've got to do to get your friends to join with you because God has got something very special this week for you. Isn't that right, Evelina? Yes, it is so incredible to be here. And even as we're standing in this place, I can feel the power of God. We can feel the presence of the Lord because right here in this moment, literally thousands of people, they're worshiping Jesus. And tonight, we're going to have a powerful worship with Eddie James. John Arnott, he's going to bring the Word of God. And we want to encourage you, if you're not in Pensacola, but you're watching online, maybe you're in the living room, maybe you're in your kitchen, maybe you are in the hospital, just open your heart, open your spirit, because we believe that our Lord Jesus Christ, He wants to speak to you and He wants to encounter you face to face and heart to heart. That's yes. Right. And we actually have a team here right now that are going to be praying for you. We've got a team online right now that want to pray for you. Be here online and you're saying, I wish I could be in the room, but just know you are as much a part of this week as those that are in the room. We are going to be praying for you. We've got a team online right now that would like to lift you up before our Heavenly Father. If you could comment below with your prayer requests, make sure you comment with those prayer requests because we would love to pray for you. And after tonight's session with John Arnott, which is going to be so powerful, John Arnott actually uh, was one of the leaders. He and his wife for the Toronto blessing, the Toronto outpouring, that revival that happened in Toronto. So after tonight shared, we're actually going to pray with you live. So please stay till the very end. Put your comments in there. And myself and evangelist Evelina would love to pray for you. Like this stream right now on your social media. Share it right now. We have got such a powerful time coming up for you. Yes, and maybe you're watching this live and you have a friend, as Andrew said, and they don't know about this conference. They don't know about what the Lord is doing. Please, would you go right now, if you're watching us through Facebook or YouTube, would you like, would you share, or, and would you just sh uh, send this link to your friends, to your family members, because we know that the Lord will speak to them. And also, we, had a, we have an amazing opportunity and we have a free gift for you. So if you want to receive a free gift, please, you can go to livesephan.org and you can read uh, the information in there and you can receive a free gift. Isn't it amazing, Andrew? Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. right. We will send that gift yes. to you. Just go to live.cfan.org to claim your free gift right now. I want you to miss out on what God's got for you. And so I encourage you, get that free gift at live.cfan.org and let your friends know about that link as well. We really believe that this is going to be a powerful time. You see, there was a wonderful revival that broke out here in Pensacola. 20 years ago, you may have heard of it, the Brownsville Revival. And we, out of that revival, many ministries were birthed. And one of the ministers that was touched so deeply at that revival was Evangelist Daniel Kalender. Evangelist Daniel Kalender is actually the host of this event. This is a Christ for All Nations uh, conference event. And I can tell you right now, CFAN, as we call it, Christ for All Nations, has changed both of our lives and it can change your life as well as you lean into this ministry. Uh, myself, I'm a boot camp graduate 
of Christ for All Nations. That's their three-month school that they run in Orlando, Florida. And ever since joining CFAN, and Evelina would agree, my life has been turned upside down because the harvest truly is ripe. And what CFAN does, what evangelist Daniel Kalender does, is preaches the gospel to the masses, but not just preaches himself. Evangelist Daniel Kalender raises up other evangelists. So after being trained up by CFAN, I've gone on to see over a hundred thousand decisions for Jesus in this last year alone. I just got back from Kenya wow. and in Kenya we saw 96,151 decisions for Jesus and that was in just three weeks alone. The harvest is ripe. So I encourage you get involved in what CFAN is doing. You can go to cfan.org to learn more. But honestly, this is going to be a powerful week and we're so excited to introduce you to CFAN if you've never heard of CFAN. Christ for All Nations is a ministry you want to partner with and you want to receive from. And we're honoured to be able to pour into you through this live stream. Evelina, what about yourself? I know since joining CFAN, it's changed so much for you as well. Yeah, and it's such an honour even to share with you what the Lord has done in my life because I remember when I just received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I was 15 years old and my first Christian videotape that I watched, it was Ron Harponky preaching the gospel in Africa. And as I was watching, I felt the fire of God in my living room. That's why I want to encourage you, maybe you're not here in Pensacola, but you're watching this live stream in your living room just believe that the Lord can touch you his fire can fall upon you and you can just receive from him because this is what happened with me as I saw him preaching the gospel I knelt down in my living room and I said here I am Lord here I am send me to the mission field send me to Africa and I want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ with my own eyes I want to see how you heal deliver and save your people you know, and it took a few years, but the Lord had heard my prayer. And two years ago, I had the greatest honor of my life. I went to the very first evangelism boot camp in Orlando. And the Lord, He has changed my life. He equipped me. And now I'm serving and preaching the gospel in Africa, in Tanzania. And I saw how thousands of thousands of people, they came to Jesus. And I have the opportunity to train others because I was trained by evangelist Daniel Kolenda, by the CFAN team. And I'm just so, so blessed that I'm a part of this family. Because Andrew, I, I don't know what was your experience, but for me, it's more than just a ministry. It's more than just a conference. I feel that this is my family and we have so many beautiful brothers and sisters around us with the same purpose, with our eyes focused on Jesus and we're ready to bring great harvest for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. It really is such a beautiful ministry to be a part of. I know my family and I are also monthly partners of CFAN. We give every month to this ministry and I would encourage you to pray for CFAN, to partner with CFAN because this tribe that is rising up, see evangelist Daniel Kalender had a vision of a decade of double harvest to double what we've seen. You see, Christ for All Nations has already seen 83 million 692,000 documented Hallelujah. decisions since they started keeping record. And evangelist Daniel Kalender believes in a multiplication of that, a decade of double harvest. And so it truly is the greatest blessing, not just to my life, because I get to see the harvest with my own eyes in the field, in Africa, but can be a huge blessing to your life as you partner in and you believe together that we would see that number even doubled we would see 150 million decisions for Jesus over the next decade. It's happening right now, friends. So we thank you so much for partnering with CFAN, for standing with us. And even this last year, we've seen many outreaches, haven't we? Yes, we've seen 5,117 outreaches. Wow. Yes, the Lord. and we've preached the gospel in six continents around the world.
It's so precious what is happening, isn't it? Even, uh, you know, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, who of course founded Christ for All Nations, he had a vision of a blood-washed Africa. Yes. He said from Cape Town to Cairo. And do you know, Evelina, you, you may have seen this. I think both of us were praying for this team and, and cheering them on. But we have just been in Egypt where there was a great gospel crusade. We saw incredible things happen there. And through the Christ for All Nations family, they saw, I think it was over 10,000 documented decisions for Jesus in Hallelujah. Egypt. Hallelujah. And so what evangelist Reinhard Bonnke believed for is coming true. From Cape Town to Cairo, we're seeing a blood-washed Africa, but also in Asia, also in Europe, even in Ukraine, we're seeing incredible things happening for the Lord. And right now it's happening here in America. And we believe as when this conference taking place, many of you, you will be called to the nations. You will be called maybe to your neighborhood, to, to the places maybe where you've never been before. But the Lord, He will speak to you. He will pour out His Spirit. So just get ready. Get ready to receive from Him. I just feel such an urgency in my spirit. Because as we're standing here, we just feel the people came and they're so hungry for more. So there is more of Jesus and His presence is available for you. So whatever it is, you can just say, Jesus, you know, maybe you're looking for a family. When Maybe you're looking for your purpose. We want to tell you that the Lord, He has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for your life and He loves you so much. And we believe that this week will mark mark you forever in Jesus name that's right we have got an incredible lineup of anointed men and women of God that are going to minister over this week so we encourage you to share that link cfan.org forward slash live or live.cfan org and you can also share what's on the social media channels as well I'm telling you what right now your life could be forever transformed if you would lean in this week my wife Joyce she always says that you can be as close to God as you want to be and I believe that I believe that God is right there waiting for us to lean in because it's harvest time it is time for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit all across the world all across the nations we're seeing rumblings of revival in Australia we're seeing rumblings of revival in Europe there are amazing things happening all around the world and I want to encourage you lean in this week see what God might do because it is going to be such a powerful week we're so happy to be hosting you we're going to be praying for you after the service so please this session's going to come. Eddie James is going to lead us in worship. You're going to hear from evangelist Daniel Kalenda, from John Arnott. It's going to be powerful. But please stay engaged. Make sure you comment, comment your prayer requests. Share the link with your friends because it's going to be such a powerful time. And we're so honoured that you would spend the time with us over this week. So that's live.cfan.org. Share the link and make sure you get your free resource there. We're so expectant. We've only got got a couple of minutes to go before we're going to worship together with Eddie James. It's going to be powerful. Yes, and we're just reminding you one more time that we can see your comments. We can see your names. And most important, the Lord, He sees your name. Whatever it is in your life, maybe you're going through a very tough time, very, very tough season in your life. Is there any prayer request? Please just comment below. Just say what's happening in your life and we have a prayer team and we are praying for you because we want you to succeed in Jesus name and we want you to receive your answer from the Lord in Jesus name and Andrew maybe we can just take a minute before we start worshiping we can just pray that the Lord will speak to those precious people who are watching us online absolutely yes. Let's hallelujah pray. Holy Spirit
Spirit, we just say thank you for your presence. Thank you that you're here with us. And we just bless every person who is watching us online. Thank you that they're not hidden. They're not forsaken. You know them. You know what's happening in their lives. And we ask you, Jesus, would you speak to them tonight? Would you speak to their situation? Would you speak to their heart? And we ask you for a fresh encounter with you, Jesus. Would you fill their hearts, their minds with your sweet presence and with your love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we yes. pray. So we are going to be going uh, into the arena in just a moment. So I encourage you once again, before we start, go to live.cfan.org, share that link. And we are going to be praying for you at the end of this session. So we are going to be joined by Eddie James and by evangelist Daniel Kalenda and John Arnott. It's going to be a powerful time, but we're here all week as well. So lean in. We bless you. We're so excited for what's about to take place. And if you're not familiar with the ministry of evangelist Daniel Kalenda, with the ministry of CFAN, make sure you go to cfan.org to learn more. Evelina, I can feel the excitement <laughs> building right now. Yeah. I can feel the, the, the move of God is going to pour out in this space. So I would love to pray as well. I'd love to. All right, I'm going to pray right now in yeah. Jesus' mighty name. Father God, would you pour out your spirit? Yes, would you move in people's living rooms, in their, in their bedrooms, in their kitchens, all over the world, wherever they are, whether they're gathered under a tree, whether they're gathered outside. I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to touch hearts, you're going to change lives, and the fire is going to fall again in Jesus' mighty name. Would you bless my brothers and my sisters, my mothers and my fathers, my sons and my daughters, my friends gathered together right now. Speak to their hearts, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, my friend, make sure you don't go anywhere because at the end of the session, Evelina, Evangelist Evelina and myself will be back and we'll be praying for you. God's going to touch your heart. Get out your notebook. Get out your Bible. Put your phone on silent if you need to do that because this is going to be a night of fire. Amen. So get ready. In a few seconds, we are going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Be blessed as you watch. In Jesus' name, amen. that you are you'll be able to tell stories but that's not going to change the world what you need is nothing else and nothing less than the manifestation the shekinah glory of god dwelling upon your life when you go from this place i go with you and everywhere you go the power of the kingdom of heaven follows steve hill came here he caught for carol one night she prayed for me in and he just flew 10 feet and it hit the wall and that was a common story people would come get touched filled up go back home and it would all break out there so it was so contagious that we began to call it catch the fire the lines would form every morning at 6 a.m this went on for several years they would form at 6 a.m. in the morning, people coming from around the world to stand on line 12 hours. People got saved standing on the lines. People got saved even driving by the building. God was raising up people with an intense desire to serve Him, to be in love with Him, to be cleansed by Him, to be healed by Him. The hunger, the thirst, was tangible and some nights the presence of God in the most unexpected ways and times would just break out there was never a service that was just a lot of singing and a lot of preaching and people coming to the altar no 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 there was an electricity there was a hunger there was a thirst and at certain points you could tell God just came in God just took over I believe that God is getting ready to move sovereignly again in this new generation. I believe this generation needs an outpouring of the Holy Spirit 
even greater than what we saw in the 90s. And I believe that one of the natural outcomes of revival is that people, when they get touched by God like that, they can't just keep it to themselves. There is a burning desire in their hearts to go out and to take what they've received and to give it away. Jesus said, freely you have received, now freely give. That's exactly what we saw in Pensacola in 2019. People came from all over the country. Actually, they came from all over the world with an expectancy that God would light the fire in their life. And then we begin to see that. We begin to hear testimonies. They brought it back to their region or their church or God lit them so much on fire and called them into ministry. They knew they needed to, to come to boot camp or come to a, a ministry school and to dive in with what God was calling them to do. Revival is not a word, it's the person of Jesus. I describe it as the upper room. I describe it as when God comes down and changes whole regions. He revives, he, he heals, he restores. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's when a man and woman literally are so aware of the presence of God that everything stands still. Everything is changed. It is where the presence of God is so real that it draws the broken, the lost. Revival is falling in love with Jesus all over. Revival is coming back to your first love. It's really, you know, revival is not actually for the lost, it's for the church. Because the church loses her way, the church loses their fire. The fire is the anointing in your life. The fire is the ability to hear the Holy Spirit's voice. You can lose that as you start to wander away and into these other things. I believe it's going to be a, a gathering. People are gonna be called to come together and then God's gonna to touch them, call them in a special way and there's gonna be a launching out into ministry, callings are gonna be received. People are gonna be called into ministry. They're gonna be launched into the nations as missionaries, as evangelists, as pastors, as preachers, as all kinds of different things. He is absolutely going to move and do it again. And joining in with that now is a whole younger generation who are powerfully anointed and being used by God right now. It's just exciting, isn't it? Personally, I think the Lord's going to just breathe on people that no one knows and just raise them up from obscurity and begin to use them. And we're going to see some of the most unusual things happen. I really feel in my spirit that we're at the dawn of a new era. Years and years of day and night prayer have reached the throne of God and the answers are coming. People are crying out. People are seeking God. So we are gathering together believing that this is a time that God has ordained, that He's called this, that He's, that He wants to do something, and we're, we're responding to that call and saying, Lord, do it again. We're available, we say yes, we need your outpouring, we need your spirit. And I really believe God is gonna hear that prayer and answer it in a dramatic way. Hallelujah! How many are excited tonight? Well, welcome. My name is Russ Benson, and I will be your host for the week. And I tell you what, I couldn't be more excited about what God's about to do in this place. I want to welcome those that are watching by live stream from all over the world. It's great that you can join us. But if you're within three hours or less away, you need to get in your car and get here in Jesus' name. Before we get started, I want to just give a couple quick announcements, and you guys are ready to worship, amen, I can tell. So I'm super excited about all that's going to happen this week. Every single session is going to be amazing. Don't miss one session, because each session represents a great moving of the Holy Spirit that God wants to deposit in our heart. 
You see, this is not just a conference, my friends. This is a bunch of, I don't know about you, but, but this is a bunch of hungry, spirit-filled believers that are coming to press in for revival. Hey, if you're not here for that, you may have come to the wrong place. I want you to get up on your feet here. We're going to worship. I know the team is ready. But listen, we have some special things going on this week. One of those things is personal prophetic ministry. I remember going to Morning Star conferences in the 90s, and, and you can sign up and go get per personal prophetic ministry. We're going to do that here this week. If you're interested in receiving personal prophetic ministry, all you need to do sometime today or tonight maybe tomorrow early, sign up under section 111. It's up there to my right. There's some tables over there. Sign up because there's only limited spots for that. Also, how many of you know God fills us with the fire of God so we can go out and win the lost? Christ for all nations is all about winning the lost to Jesus. And we realize that the Holy Ghost fills us so we can preach the gospel with power. So what we're doing at this conference, even though I don't like that word, is Saturday night, we're going to the Brownsville Assembly of God parking lot, the Brownsville Church, and we're going to preach the gospel to that neighborhood. Now, we, we want to invite all of you Holy Ghost filled people. You're going to get filled up this week, and we want you to come and join us. That's going to be at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Okay, say 3 p.m. at the Brownsville Church. Also, there's a lot of great revival products. You can visit our bookstore just to my left. So much wonderful things are going to happen this week. Amen? Are you guys ready to worship God? Now, now this is what I want to say. I'm a revivalist. I was birthed in revival, okay? I, I, I soaked at Brownsville. I pressed in with, with the Argentine revival and the Toronto revival. And listen, my heart today is as hungry today as it was in 1997 and 1998. But if we're going to go there, we got to allow the Holy Spirit to come, amen? So what I want to do tonight is I want to make this very clear from the leadership of this conference at Christ for All Nations. You have permission tonight to press into God. You have permission tonight to praise God like you've never praised God before. If you've got flags, I want you to wave them. If you got to dance, I want you to dance. If you got to shout, Eddie, I know you got to shout, Eddie. I want you to shout tonight. And I want you to press in to the things of God. Listen, this just ain't your Sunday morning service. This is a revival conference. And we're going after God this week. Amen. Amen. Come on, Eddie. Let's go. Let's go tonight. Come on, lift up your praise in this room tonight. Yeah. Somebody lift up your voice. The God of the breakthrough is in this house. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on. One, two, everybody praise God!
worship, your break through in my praise, break through when I lift and glorify your name, break through in a dance, break through when I shout, you are the God, you are the God of the break through in my heart. to be with you tonight I'm telling you this is going to be explosive you will never be the same after this week look at your neighbor and say never the same never the same never the same you will never be the same hallelujah my name is Eddie James I'm so happy to be worshiping with you this evening and uh, I want to encourage you before this week is over to stop by our resource table, we got CDs and books and, and T-shirts and hoodies. Not only would it bless you, but God has given us a ministry to young people to bring them out of addiction and out of the streets. And we have a recovery program with 17 young men in it. And some of these guys dancing have testimonies of being free from addiction and free, amen, from the street life. And how many of you believe that they're worth fighting for, amen? So stop by our table, not only will you wear some awesome shirts and get some awesome books and music, but you'll be a blessing to our young people. Amen. So we want to encourage you to come. I'll be back there and signing and doing some good stuff with you. Amen. Are you ready to celebrate? Are you ready to magnify the name of Jesus? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet. Come on, on solid ground. Come on, put your hands together, come on. Yeah. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. 
Somebody put a shout right here. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, for those in the room tonight, those who might be watching my live stream, and you find yourself in a dead place, you find yourself needing revival in your spirit, you need God to pull you out of a dry place, 
I want to declare this over you because you're in the right place at the right time. God's about to light the fire in your heart again. You're not going to be the same after this week. God's going to transform you. God's going to refresh you. God's going to renew you. God's going to revive you. Come on, somebody shout, yes, yes, yes. So I declare this over you tonight. I want y'all to help me say it. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Come on, everybody, help me say, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Come on, say, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. same yesterday today and forever we've gathered here in Pensacola tonight Jesus because you are worthy to be exalted you are worthy to be glorified we declare God that you are great and greatly to be praised you are great and greatly to be praised somebody give him worship in this room let the sound of your worship fill this arena let the sound of your worship fill this atmosphere God, we've gathered in this place with one accord and we declare, God, that you are worthy from the rising of the sun to the setting of the saint. You are worthy of worship. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be exalted. We give you glory, Jesus. Somebody make some noise in this room. Lift up a shout to Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. Hey, yeah. Nobody Besides you, Jesus, you are mighty God alone. You're the one who sits upon the throne. Come on, everybody, and say, You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever.
We're going to lift those hands and worship Jesus. Come on, all over the room. I want you to lift those hands to the Lord right now. Let the sound of your love for him fill the room. I love you, Jesus. Such a name, Jesus. Be lifted high, Jesus. Be lifted high, oh Lord.
just your voice is glorified. Glorify thy name. I want you to lift those hands all over the room and sing that to Jesus, glorify, glory. your name Jesus we lift your name tonight God we glorify not like you and all the earth Lord we lift the sound of worship in this room Jesus be glorified 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 be lifted high presence of the Lord is in this room. Just lift your sound, lift your sound. Let rivers of worship like, let it just flow out of your belly like rivers of living water tonight. Come on. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will of the goodness of God. <laughs> All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will of the goodness of God. And I love your voice. You have led me to the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. As a friend, I have been in 
You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. But just to keep order, your voice is lifted up. Lord, you're worthy of from you are all things and to for from you
Come and lift those hands all over the room and say that My beloved is Raise your voice in the room and say We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We glorify you, Yeshua. Be exalted in the room, Jesus. Be exalted in this place, O oh God. Be exalted in this room, Jesus. Oh, we worship and adore you, Jesus. Lift your hands and worship Jesus. Oh, we glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We give you all. We worship 
lift your hands one more time and say that we give you
Just your voices one more time. You are holy. Would you just take the hand of the person next to you? Let's just begin this, fire, this Light the Fire Again conference by dedicating ourselves and presenting ourselves before the Lord. You know, in this very city, my life was changed forever and marked by a move of the Holy Spirit. How many of you believe we need a move of the Holy Ghost in this nation again? And that is why we're here and so, Lord, come on, just lift those hands to the Lord. Father, we are here as your people in your presence. We present ourselves to you tonight and this week for the sake of your kingdom and your glory. For the sake, Lord, of revival in this nation and across the nations of the world. We say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done right here in Pensacola, Florida. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would meet us in this place. Lord, I pray that your fire would fall. Lord, I pray that every life would be touched. I pray that every sacrifice placed upon the altar would be consumed. That we would never be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Come on, would you just give the Lord a mighty shout of praise here tonight? Before you go back to your seats, would you also just put your hands together for this amazing worship team, and band, and Eddie James, all the nations, band, everybody. Don't go too far. I need you. I need you. Are you happy to be in Pensacola tonight? Well, I hope you're ready. I'll tell you what, the last time we were gathered here was in the pre-COVID era. How many know it was a different world back then? But even though a lot of things have changed in the world, I'm glad that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what began at that last meeting that we had in 2019 in this very building has literally resulted in millions of people coming to Christ around the world. You'll hear more about that this week. But I really believe that this is historic. I believe that God is gonna touch us and mark us and that you'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to, we're going to take up an offering here. And, and before we take up the offering, let me just tell you this. You know, this event is actually free, open to the public. I know some of you paid for certain seats, but the general admission is free. And our initial plan was to actually go to the old Brownsville Assembly of God building where the revival took place back in the 90s. But when we opened registration, we basically filled that building in about a day and a half. And that would have been very cheap for us. Our costs would have been extremely low. But we realized that if we did it there, we would be completely capped and very limited. And only a, a small fraction of you that wanted to come would be able to participate in that. Just look around and you'll see that that building would not have worked. And actually there's, I think, something like 11,000 people that are registered for this conference this week. And so we, we decided to go for the only other venue in the whole Pensacola area that could accommodate the crowd, and it was the Pensacola Bay Center. But how many of you know to rent a place like this is expensive? 
And so we really took a risk, we took a, a step of faith to do this here and, and opening it up and making it general admission free to the public was an even greater step of faith. And so we're trusting the Lord to help us. Actually, I have good news for you. All of the expenses for this conference are already paid for. How many of you would say that's an amazing miracle? That's the good news. The bad news is that a lot of that money is still in your bank account. So we need you to help us this week to pay for these bills. And I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, we need about $250,000 to cover the expenses for the week. If we raise that, we won't, we won't be begging you for money anymore, okay? So please, if you're, if you're able to help us, we would love you to be able to help us. We, we're gonna pass out some of these envelopes for those of you <clears throat> that give via check or cash, some of these old fashioned methods of giving. If you need one of these envelopes for check or cash, just raise your hand and an usher will come to you right now. I'm gonna give a little bit of time for, the, for that to happen. Ushers, please uh, move quickly and distribute those. I'm also gonna ask our um, audio technicians to give me a little bit of my microphone in the monitors, please, so I don't lose my voice here in this very first moment. Praise the Lord. I wanna read to you a little passage that was just on my heart. I only found out that I was taking up the offering about 10 minutes ago. I need a little bit more um, of my vocal in the monitor, please. And this scripture just came into my heart. It's from the very end of King David's life. How many of you know that King David had in his heart to build a temple for the Lord, but because David was a man of war and he had blood on his hands, the Lord would not allow him to actually be the one to build that sacred place. But what the Lord allowed David to do was to collect the offerings and the resources to build the temple. And David considered that a great privilege to be able to do all of that preliminary groundwork and then hand it off to his son, who is his successor. And at the very end of the book of First Chronicles, in chapter 29, there's this prayer that David prays right at the end of his life. And this is the part that, that just dropped into my heart. David prays in verse 14, who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come from thee and of thine own hand have we given to thee. Let me say that again. David prays, who are we that we should be able to offer our gifts back to you? How many of you would like to see that kind of an attitude when it comes to giving? You know, the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Here, David, his heart is, is so pure before the Lord that not only is he willing to give, but he's saying, Lord, who am I that you would allow me to give back to you? Because everything that I have, I'm giving to you out of your own hand. I tell you what, if we had that revelation, not only as the people of God, but as people who trust the Lord every day for our sustenance and our provision, what an incredible breakthrough that would be, that even when we give to the Lord, we give to him out of his own hand. The Bible says to him that giveth seed to the sower. How many of you know God is the one who puts the seed in your hand to sow? A great example of this, you know, I've got five kids, and when my kids were little, they always wanted to put money into the offering. And so what would I do? I would pull some money out of my pocket and I would put money in each one of their hands and then they would go put that money in the offering. Sometimes they keep the money for themselves. What they failed to realize is that it wasn't their money anyway. I was giving it to them to sow and I believe it's the same way with the Lord that actually he is the one that supplies the seed for every sower. And one of the most incredible experiences that I had with the principle of sowing and reaping happened right here in Pensacola when I was a student in Bible school. I don't know if you've ever heard me tell this story, but you know, since those days when I was in Bible school here in Pensacola, I've had to trust the Lord sometimes for millions of dollars. You're gonna hear about our gospel crusades this week. I don't know if you know this, but it costs a million dollars to put on one of those gospel crusades. Now we see on average a million people come to Christ. So how many of you would say that's a pretty good investment? But you don't start out trusting the Lord for a million dollars. You trust out, you start out trusting him for 10, and then 100, and then 1,000, 
And as the, the faith grows and the needs grow, the principles are all exactly the same. So I remember it was, um, I was coming down to the end of the semester here. I was at the Brownsville Revival School of Ministry and it was at the end of the, the semester, I had to put down a deposit in order to be able to come back to school the next semester. And the deposit was $2,000. And so I didn't have that money. I wasn't able to afford that. I, I had been praying and trusting the Lord and it came down to the last day. And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that where you're praying and now it comes right down to the wire and it's like, God, if you don't do this, I'm gonna fall flat on my face. I checked my bank account that morning. I had exactly $200 in my bank account, $200. And as I was praying about it, I heard the Lord say something. I think I'd heard somebody say this at one point, but it suddenly came back to my spirit. And this was what the Lord said to me. If what you have in your hand will not meet your need, it can't be your harvest, it must be your seed. Let me say that again. If what you have in your hand will not meet your need, it can't be your harvest, it must be your seed. And I suddenly realized I need 2,000 and I have 10%, I have 200. The Lord actually put the seed into my hand to sow. And so I said, well, Lord, I have the seed, but now where do I sow the seed? And with God as my witness, I'm in my room praying. I said, Lord, where should I sow the seed? There's a knocking at the door. I opened the door. A friend of mine was standing there. His name was Josh. He had, a, he was, he had been weeping. He said, hey, I'm here to say goodbye to all my friends. I'm not going to be able to come back next semester. I said, why not? He said, I was supposed to put um, a deposit down on my room today. It cost $300. I only have 100 And I said, Josh, I've got good news for you. I wrote him a check, I gave it to him. He went away rejoicing. I shut the door, I got back down on my knees and I said, Lord, well now I've made plenty of room in my bank account. <laughs> Let me tell you something, if you need 2000 and you only have 200, the 200 doesn't help you much anyway, you might as well be obedient. And so I sowed that seed and later on that day, I went down to the little public library to check my email. That back in those days, you know, that was the early days of internet and email, and I, I would make my daily trip to the library to check my email. And when I got there, there was an email from my father back in my hometown. He said, a family friend of ours that we hadn't heard from in many years sent a check, a letter arrived at the house, and it's for you. And he said that it's to help you pay for your school expenses. And you know how much it is? $2,000. We give to the Lord from his own hand. He is the one that puts seed in our hands to sow. Now, you know, if you eat the seed that God gives you to sow, you never reap the harvest. But if you sow the seed, even if it's painful in the moment, how many of you know what comes later is pressed down, shaken together, running over, exponential increase and in harvest and blessing? And, you know, I say this as someone who myself, I'm giving to this. I'm not being paid to be here, but I'm going to be sowing into it. And our entire team, you know, we are a giving ministry. We, we don't just preach uh, sowing and reaping, we practice that. There are many evangelists and ministries in this room that are supported by Christ for all nations because we ourselves believe in this principle of seed time and harvest. I know that you believe in it too, and I believe that God is going to not only meet in this conference our needs, but he's gonna meet your needs as you help to meet our needs as well. Isn't that incredible how, this, how, how the body of Christ works? And so. One more time, if you need one of these envelopes, just lift your hand. If there's anybody missing, the, the, the ushers are coming around. Also, we have all of these ways to give. Can we put that up on the screen, please? Different ways that you can give. Um, you can give via Cash App, Venmo, Zelle. You can, um, you can see there, there's PayPal. Um, you, can, you can use uh, all these different ways. You can even text CFAN, C-F-A-N, to that number that's right there, 888. 364-4483. If you're watching online, you can also use any of these methods to give. We're make, trying to make that as easy and convenient as possible. If you're writing a check, you can make those checks out to Christ for All Nations, or you can just use the initials CFAN, C-F-A-N. Again, Christ for All Nations or C-F-A-N. And we thank you in advance for your help. Let me just pray for you as you're preparing those. Father, thank you so much for every man and woman 
that you have brought together. Lord, thank you that you are going to deposit incredible gifts and blessings into our lives this week. And Lord, right here at the beginning, we give back to you out of your own hand. Lord, we give to you as an act of worship. Lord, who are we that we get to be a part of your heart and your harvest and your end time work? But Lord, we thank you that you've given us a the opportunity to be a part of this. Lord, I pray that you would bless every gift, bless every giver in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Ushers, please begin to collect those envelopes.
battle is yours, Lord. Lord, we trust you with every trial, with every difficulty. Lord, we thank you that you are fighting for us. Lord, we thank you that you are interceding and intervening on our behalf tonight. Lord, I thank you that every situation that you will show yourself mighty in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. You can be seated tonight. Thank you so much, worship team. How many of you are ready tonight for the Word of God? You know, one of the amazing things about this conference over the next several days, obviously there's, there's many things that we could talk about, but the lineup of speakers, the, the men and women that you're going to be hearing from in each and every one of these sessions are actually some of the greatest men and women of God that are alive in the world today, generals of the faith, people that God has used around the world to see revival movements sparked and literally millions of people come into the kingdom. And the man that you're about to hear from right now is no exception to that. How many of you love Pastor John Arnott? <laughs> Pastor John is gonna come in just a moment, but I, I, I want you to hear this too, Pastor. You know, I was, uh, I was 15 years old when the Brownsville revival started, that was kind of how I ended up getting immersed into the, the river, what God was doing. And then I, I, I heard about what was happening in Toronto. And Toronto had uh, actually been experiencing a move of God about a year before the Brownsville revival started. And so I remember this was the very early days of the internet. And I, I wasn't able to get to Toronto, Canada myself, but I was able to pull up on a dial-up modem I was able to pull up an internet feed 
It was just one camera, I think, stationed in the back of the room showing what was happening. And it was about as big as a postage stamp. And it would freeze, you know, every, every five or six minutes or so. But I can remember sitting there 10, 11 o'clock at night, glued to the television, watching what God was doing in Toronto and weeping sometimes under the presence of God as I, as I experienced through that little medium what God was doing. And I could tell you story after story about the way that the ministry of, of John Arnott has influenced my life, but I think it would be much better to just let him come and minister to all of us. So would you help me? Would you just stand to your feet, put your hands together and welcome John Arnott as he comes tonight. Oh, hi everybody, this is amazing to be here tonight. Wow. How many are excited about what God is about to do? I hope you are, because it's really, really amazing and really good. Uh, how, many are, how many were here back in 2019 when we did the last one? Wasn't that fun? And somehow or other, we lost a couple of years. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but yeah, we're ready again. I want to, uh, I want to talk to you about um, harvest tonight. I call this God's... Uh, fire for revival, or we could also call it getting ready for harvest, because I believe with all my heart that the greatest harvest the world has ever seen is about ready to break out on the earth. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it bothers me that all, all the words of all the exciting stuff is always in the future sometime. You know, it's always about to come. Have you noticed that? But still, that's in God's economy. He, he does it that way where yesterday was fantastic, but now we're looking forward to even greater things. And so I, I want us to get ready for the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. And I think we're just about there. So, fasten your seat belts. Before we uh, get going, I just want to point out something that God is calling us to a place of godly character these days. And I think you know what I mean by that. It's, it has to do with uh, your honesty and your integrity and your ability to, I don't know, do, to keep your promises and to be faithful and stuff like that. And so character is huge. And right along with that comes competency. And I, I have a little grid that I like to measure myself with or or any staff that we may be hiring or whatever. And it goes like this, character and then competency, meaning are you anointed or are you good at what you do? Like a, if, you, if you're a dentist, you need to be uh, a competent dentist or you're not gonna have a practice for long. And so it is in, in ministry when we're sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus in signs and wonders and power, we, we, need, to, we need to be anointed and, uh, and able to do that under the anointing and the power of God. It's so important. And as we talk about that, why don't you just surrender your hands and your heart to him and say, Lord, I welcome the anointing to come upon my life because that's what tonight is all about. And then the next thing that we want to measure is our motive. Why do we want to do what we want to do? Uh, do we have the right motive? Or are we 
sort of struggling to be, have significance somewhere. And we need to find our significance in God and not in the recognition of other people or even in what we've managed to achieve and accomplish for the Lord. And then the final thing is your history and your track record. So you might just want to write that down. Like if, if you are aspiring to all those things, character, competency, and motive, well then how are you doing at it? And just take a, a good look in the mirror and reflect because God is looking for faithfulness as well. You and I have been called to the highest calling and to sum that up, that means he wants us to be like Jesus. How many want to be like Jesus? Do you really? Just, just long for that, just yearn for that, just for a moment. Now, our context tonight <clears throat> is that we're in the last days. How many agree with that? Okay, how do I know we're in the last days? Uh, by that, I mean the biblical timing of the end of the age. And uh, there's some scriptures I'll just toss out here. You can write them down if you, if you are so inclined. But in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that Daniel was to interpret. And in that dream, he was given an overview of history. And there were these empires that would come and go. There's, there's four or five, depending on how you count, but there was Babylon first, then the Medes and Persians, then Alexander the Great and the Greek Empire, and then Rome, and it was Rome uh, west and then east, the two legs, and finally the feet and the toes that were made of iron and clay. And that was somewhere around 600 BC that they got that outline. And you know, all that stuff is happened already. That's behind us now. And we are down in the time of the feet of iron and clay. And I believe that clay represents people, therefore democracies. And scripture said in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up his kingdom and it'll be a kingdom that'll never end. Remember how the story goes, how a stone was cut out of the mountain, it struck that whole system on the feet, the thing collapsed and blew away like dust, and then that stone grew and became a mountain and filled the whole earth. That puts us in the time frame of right now, in the times of these democratic kings. Um, there's another scripture in the book of Joel, chapter three, and verse one and two, where the Lord says, I will yet again restore my people Israel to their land. And in the day that I do that, in those days, I will gather all the earth to the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of judgment, and I will judge them there. And that's talking about the final judgment. So the, in the days that he regathers Israel, um, it's going to be in that season that the whole program of man on earth kind of winds up and it's handed over to King Jesus. You know, he had a, a prophecy about him when Mary was told that you're gonna have a son and you call his name Jesus and he's gonna be great and he's gonna sit on the throne of David and rule the earth. And that's coming. I want you to just let that sink in. Carol and I both just wrote a little booklet which came out from the publisher about a month ago. Mine is called, uh, Where is the Promise of His Coming? And Carol's is called, The Spirit and the Bride Say Come. And we write little booklets because people read booklets, that's what I find. And you know, if you can read something in an hour and a half, you're apt to read it rather than just read the first chapter if you're anything like me. But I'm telling you, the, these things are upon us now. 
Isaiah 11, 11 says, I'm going to restore Israel again for the second time. And I want you to know that Israel became a nation in 1948, which was about uh, 75 years ago. Uh, 74 years ago, I should say. Established as a nation 74 years ago. Now, most of you guys in, in the audience tonight, I dare say, weren't born yet in 1948. How many were alive in 1948? Wave at me. Okay, you see, there's not very many. <laughs> there's not many of us. And so you, you guys have lived all your lives and Israel has been a fact. <laughs> but for, for hundreds of years, theologians had said, Israel will never be a nation again. It's just not the way it's gonna work out. We believe that the church now has replaced all those prophecies that have to do with Israel. And God says, oh no, they haven't. And so in 1948, he came and changed all of that. And now they've been a nation for all that time. And then in 73, uh, sorry, in 67, we had the, the prophecy of Jesus regarding Jerusalem fulfilled. And you can read about that in Luke chapter 21, verse 24, Jerusalem, which is now Israel's capital. But he said, Jerusalem will be trodden down, occupied by Gentiles until the times of those Gentiles and those nations is fulfilled. We don't want to get into the politics and we, we really are compassionate toward the Palestinians and all of that, but God said it in the word that it's going to happen and you know what? It happened. And so one more, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to every nation and then the end will come, Matthew 24, 14. And so all these scriptures, friends, are telling us we're in the time of the end. These, none of these were true 100 years ago, but now today they are. How many of you have the sense that something is up? Like this, this kind of fear, in some cases, fear hanging over people. And in other cases, just this, what's going on? Why, why does it feel like the wheels are coming off the earth? Well, I think it's preparation for the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. <laughs> and Jesus referred to that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 39, and also verse 49, and he said this, the harvest is at the end of the age. How many remember reading that? So that means if we are in the time of the end of the age and the harvest is at the end of the age, then the greatest harvest the world has ever seen is about ready to come in. Now, the thing that gives me pause is the comment of Jesus where he said, the angels are the reapers. So just tell your friend, you may not be needed. But I'm saying, Lord, let, let me have a part in this. I just so, 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 just a little part, that's all. I just want to be involved in this. Because this is the greatest catch of fish that the world has ever seen. And so, yeah, it's promised, it's promised, it's promised. And I believe it's coming in two parts. And the first one comes in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. And uh, you can turn to that with me if you want. We'll just look at it together. And the scene is Jesus sitting on a cloud with a, a sharp sickle in his hand, and he's waiting. And verse 14 says, Revelation 14, 14, then I looked, behold, a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having in his hand a golden, on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, 
thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Just like that. You know, we had not too far from where we lived this gigantic wheat field last year. It looked like, I don't know, 100 acres, 200 acres of wheat. And it, we just watched it grow. It came up green and got grow and grow and grow and grow. And then it looked really golden and looked really ready. And one day as I came by, there's about four combines in there. And they just took that off in a matter of a day. And that field was reaped. And so I'm not expecting God's going to take a long time with this harvest. Um, if we can do that in the natural, imagine what he can do in the spiritual. And so when the Holy Spirit starts to fall in power and love and fire that is contagious, it is not going to take long to harvest the earth. How many know what I'm talking about? Now we watched him in amazement for years and still do in Toronto as the Spirit of God would move. And one of my favorite times in meetings was when it had nothing to do with any um, technique or whatever that we have learned along the way where the Spirit of God would just fall sovereignly. That's what happened the first night in Toronto. Everything was normal, the worship, the teaching. Randy Clark shared about how the Lord had brought him through a discouraging time and everything else. And at the end, he said, so that's my story. And if you'd like me to pray for you, just come on up to the front. There's not a lot of people there, but 130 of them maybe on a Thursday night. And as they went to get up, something happened. It was as though a bomb went off in the room. And all of a sudden, people are all over the floor and they're sh shrieking and yelling and laughing and wailing. And the next thing you know, they're under the chairs, they're between the rows, they're in the aisles and the whole room just erupted into this noise. And, and I'm wondering what just happened? It was the Holy Spirit came and hijacked the meeting. <coughs> and that started us off. And we just kept going night after night after night. And we went nightly meetings except Monday for 12 and a half years. And it spread out so wide after that, that, you know, we, we, we just thought, well, we'll just do conferences and do church and everything else. and and. It, it was the most incredible season of my life up to that point in time. And yet, we had a prophetic word where the Lord said, uh, if you think this is it, this is not it. Basically, you haven't seen anything yet. This is just kind of a warm up. And so ever since that day, I've been leaning into that promise. God, when, 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 and see, Jesus is on that cloud waiting until he gets word from the temple. Now, reap the earth. And that's gonna be a very, very big harvest. If you keep reading, you know, it, it transitions into a judgment time in Revelation 14 there, but um, I'm not gonna go into that except to say that in Revelation chapter seven, we see another great multitude of people. Uh, and that's in verse nine, John is telling the story and he looks a great multitude which no one could number of all the nations and tribes and peoples and tongues and they're standing before the throne. So they're in heaven now and before the lamb clothed with white. And he's asked a question, who are these? And he answers, oh Lord, only you would know. And he gets the response, these are the ones that came out of great tribulation. These are the ones that came out of great trouble. And so, 
It leads us into eschatology, which I'm not going to go there tonight because that's not the topic. But you need to be thinking about these things because I believe the coming of Jesus is very, very close at hand. It could be a harvest and the rapture. And uh, you know what? One of the things that's troubling to me as a pastor is that not very many people are talking about the soon return of Jesus anymore. Have you noticed that? Maybe they do in your church. God bless you. I hope they do. Because see, that's the great hope of the church. Our hope is not here on, in this life. You know, our hope is not get a better car and a bigger house. Surely not. We want to see the earth reaped and the kingdom come, don't we? How many want that? How many really want that? Okay, then we need to go for it. An innumerable number. And so there's two great gatherings. I think they're two separate ones. The first one is a harvest that seems to come in more or less peacetime. And then the second one is another harvest that comes out of a great time of trouble. You and I need to get ready to be the ones that harvest the earth. Now, there's two metaphors in scripture which I think are very meaningful. And there are two great catches of fish. You remember when Jesus started his ministry, it's recorded in the book of Matthew, he borrowed Peter's boat after, and he told the fishermen, push out into deeper water and um, let your nets down for a catch. And what did Peter say? Come on, we fished all night, we caught nothing. But then, okay, if you insist, we'll go do it. Now see, fishermen in that time fished at night. I didn't know that really. I thought it was rare that they did that, but no, that's, that was the way they did it. I learned that in Japan just, you know, years, years ago where fishermen would go out at night, they'd hang lanterns over the side of their boat and the light would attract the fish and they would net the fish from there. And, I, and these guys in Galilee did the same thing. So to ask them to go out in the daytime is just not how it works, okay? So Peter did and there were so many fish that uh, their boat began to sink and the nets torn and uh, he calls for his partners and it says they filled both boats. And, but in that case, they landed them in the boat. Well, then at the end of his ministry, uh, after the resurrection, uh, Jesus calls to them. You know, they got discouraged and Peter said, I'm going fishing. And so away they went. They're all out there. And they fished all night and caught nothing. And someone on the shore is like, hey guys, have you got any fish? No. <laughs> well, throw your net on the other side of the boat and you'll catch. You can just imagine the conversation like, who's the wise guy, you know, like what? And someone said, well, why not? We gotta wash the net anyway. I don't know what they said, but they threw it in. All of a sudden now there's such a great catch of fish. They cannot land it into the boat they had to row the boat to the shore, dragging the net behind them, and then eventually pull it up on the beach. And I think it's, I think it's a metaphor. I think it's very symbolic. This next great harvest may not get landed into the church and cleaned up and so on. They might just go straight to heaven. I don't know. But see, what happened in Bible times was the early church went out and they did what seemed impossible. Now think about it. Rome rules the world. And now you've got a handful of disciples, maybe up to 500 different people. And Jesus commissioned them and said, 
go into all the world and make disciples of all the nations. And so they started, who were these people? Okay, they were fishermen, they were farmers, they were housewives, they were business people, they were soldiers, sailors, just ordinary people. But they got filled with the Holy Spirit and fire to the point where people called them little Christs or little anointed ones. That is to say Christian, because that's what Christian means. Are you a Christian tonight? Wave excitedly. Yes, Lord, here I am. That means little anointed one. You're not the anointed one, that's Jesus, but you and I are like him. We're little anointed ones. And so they went out and in the face of embedded paganism, worshiping Zeus and Mars and Jupiter and all of the, all of the gods of Greece and Rome, this little band went out and in about 250 years managed to completely overtake the Roman world. Imagine if you'd gone to Caesar and said, you know, our little group, we're gonna, we're gonna overtake you guys. And you're gonna turn away from the gods of Greece and Rome and you're gonna worship the Jewish God. How do you like that? What would he have said? No way. Get rid of that guy, he's crazy. No, but that's exactly what happened. Why? Because the Jewish God is God as he's revealed to us through Jesus the Messiah. And so they took the known world and eventually it became the official religion of the Roman Empire. It's amazing how that happened. It's a miracle how that happened. How did it happen? Tell me. What? By the power of the Holy Spirit working through the little old yous and me's. That's how. It's called the fire of God. It's called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now that second catch of fish is what's coming up. Because at the moment of discouragement and confusion, the disciples are trying to figure out what's going on. Jesus is here. He's going to take over. He is the Messiah. We're convinced of it. And you know what, now he's talking weird. He's talking like they're gonna kill me and I'm gonna be raised in three days and whatever. And sure enough, they crucified him and they were horrified and they buried him. And then he's raised from the dead and they're shocked. Imagine the roller coaster ride they're on. And for 40 days, he's coming and going. And then he makes an announcement, I'm going away but I'm not gonna leave you alone. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the very one who's empowered me in my ministry is gonna come upon you and empower you. So he left on day 40. <laughs> that was an amazing event where he was just lifted up and carried away and the clouds received him out of their sight. 10 days later, as they're fearful, locked in a room, the Holy Spirit descended on them. And you can read about it in Acts chapter two. There was the sound of a rushing mighty wind and then flames of fire came and rested upon their heads. How many would like to have a flame of fire rest on you? And then the rest is history. They spread out from there and went all over the world and in a couple hundred years, man, it just was, was remarkable what happened. And we need this again, friends. But I want to encourage you, we're going to have it again. The harvest is at the end of the age.
I want you to fall in love with the process of leading someone to Jesus. I want you to get your testimony ready on a one pager, how you came to know the Lord and be ready to share that with everyone you meet. I mean, it's amazing how there's tremendous hunger out there. Uh, Carol and I had a guy who was, he's a trainer really, but he's an excellent massage guy and chiropractor guy and all that kind of thing. And he was giving us both a treatment. It was the second time we had him. This is just two weeks ago. <clears throat> and so we were telling him about, about uh, the Lord and this and that, and uh, he, he's listening. And so I was first and I told him about that. And then Carol, it was her turn and, and she picked up where I left off. And so I joined her just as she's finished her session. And, and she says to him, can I pray for you? And he's like, mm, okay. And she prayed for him, put a hand on his head, and a shoulder rather, and on his chest, and began to pray. The next thing you know, this guy just threw his arms around her, sobbing and sobbing. She led him in the sinner's prayer. He said it right there and then, and just surrendered his life to Jesus. <clears throat> And he told his friend afterwards, he said, I don't know what happened to me. He said, this burning just came on me and I felt like I was burning up. And I, I just didn't know what to do. I just gave in to it. And we're like, wow. People are ready to hear that there's some good news out there. There's good news. Tell your friend, we have good news to share. We really, really do. <clears throat> now we can wonder why, um, why, do we, why do we call the fire as a symbol of the Holy Spirit? Well, there's many symbols of him. There's uh, river, rain, cloud, wind, oil, clothing even, and fire. And each one of those talk about different aspects of the Holy Spirit and the personality and the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said, if you come unto me and drink, you'll never thirst again. And, and we've got oil stories and things like that. But there's something about fire. We, we decided to call our ministry Catch the Fire because the fire is so contagious. You just, you just get some dry wood near it and around it, and next thing you know, it's going up too. And we've seen that in the, in the lives of people. And so we're talking about the fire of God coming on you and I. So it comes in you for you to refine you and then upon you to spread to other people and get them excited and get them anointed. There's a passage in Malachi chapter three, verse one to two, that talks about refiner's fire. And I want you to know that the Holy Spirit will come on you like a refiner's fire and he will teach you things like the fear of the Lord. How many want to know more about that? You know, when they refined silver in ancient times, <clears throat> they would bring it to the melting point about a thousand degrees C and all the dross and impurities would float to the top and they would ladle those off and then let it cool and then heat it up again. And then a bit less this time they'd ladle that off and let it cool. And they did that seven times until the refiner could see his face in the reflection of the silver like a mirror. And your refiner wants to see his face as he looks into your life. <clears throat> ah, not quite there. Put him back in the fire again. How many feel like you've been 
a bit in a refiner's fire lately. And you were trying to figure it out. God, what the heck is going on? Ah, oh, we're just doing a little more purifying, that's all. We're just making you a little more like Jesus, that's all. We're getting you ready for the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. Refiner's fire, don't run from it, welcome it. Fire from heaven has been a sign of God's powerful holy presence for millennia. People saw, they feared, they believed. You know, Moses on Mount Sinai, Exodus 24 says, the glory of God was like a consuming fire. I had a dear friend of mine named Ron who was just over to the actual uh, site of Mount Sinai in Arabia, just like the book of Acts says, it's in Arabia. And the mountain over there is burned black on the top. And he bought, brought back a piece of that pink granite and it's burned down within it about a half an inch right into the granite. And he said, it's the most amazing um, archeological site I've ever been to. It's like they left about a month ago. And the rock is still there that's worn, that's split. And the cave that Elijah went to is still there. And it's just an amazing sight. But that mountain shook and trembled with fire so that those people were terrified at the presence of God. That would be an experience, wouldn't it? How many would like one of those? You know, Daniel had some of those. He, he really did. He, he was just so shook up, he could hardly stand on his feet. And the book of Hebrews reiterates some of it. In Hebrews chapter 12, a sight so terrible that, um, yeah, the people were afraid. And then we have the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And I love that story, don't you? Where, where they're all gathered around and uh, he's like, well, you guys go first. And they cut themselves and they danced around and they sacrificed and there was no voice, nothing, 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 nothing. And then Elijah's all right. Get out of the way, it's my turn. He repairs the altar of the Lord. And he stood up and prayed. Let the God who answers, who answers by fire, let him be the true God. And fire fell from heaven. And it burned up the water and it burned up the stones and it burned up everything. And the people fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he's the true God. The fire of God fell that day. So much we could say about fire. In, uh, in the book of Matthew chapter three, John the Baptist talked about Jesus coming and he said, he is the one who will immerse you, baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. So see, you can feel this stuff. Why don't you hold your hands out to him right now? And just welcome him. Holy Spirit, this is all about a divine encounter with you. You're the Father's promise for each and every one of us. And Lord, we want to be lovers of God and lovers of people and we, we want to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, and all the rest of it. But we want your holy fire to fall on us. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. The baptism in the Holy Spirit took place. And they had flames of fire on their head and their fears evaporated and they waded out into the harvest. And Peter told them, these people are not drunk with wine like you suppose, but this is the prophet uh, that Joel prophesied about. This is a fulfillment in part of that word, that he is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Now let me tell you, methodology is not gonna bring in the harvest, friends. 
we can have the best tracks and the best TV and the best streams and the best this and that. But it's not going to do it. It has to be people like you and I anointed with the Holy Spirit and fire that brings God so close and so real that people encounter him and they know that they know that they know that they just had a meeting with God. That's where this is going. This is, and it's going there fast. We're in the season, we're in the time. Do you want this holy fire to fall on you? You know, when the fire fell, when Solomon was dedicating his temple, the priests could not stand to minister. What did that look like? That looked like priests all over the floor. And they could not do what they'd practiced and rehearsed to do on that very special day. Wow. The fire of the Lord fell. And we want this holy fire because it's the promise of God. Jesus is the one who baptizes you, immerses you in that fire. And then you become armed and dangerous with the Holy Spirit. There's a passage that I love in John chapter 14, verse 12, where Jesus said this, truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I'm doing. Now I'm gonna stop there, because he goes on to talk about greater works, but we get distracted by that. No, the one who believes in me, are you a believer tonight? Are you sure? All right, then you, by that anointing, by that fire on you, are going to do the works that Jesus did by that same anointing. Do you know why? Because he didn't take the Holy Spirit with him. He sent him here to rest on you and I to equip us for supernatural ministry. And let me tell you, friends, it's for everybody. It's not just for the men, ladies. It's for every person who believes in Jesus. It's for children to do, it's for old people to do. It's, it's, it's not a gender age thing at all. It's do you believe in him? That's, that's the criteria. So I want us to just encounter God for a moment here. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit is anxious to heal you? Do you know that? He wants to move in this wonderful auditorium and heal a bunch of people. It is absolutely the will of God to heal you. I tell people this everywhere. How do I know? Well, I know because Jesus healed everyone. And he never did one thing out of the will of God, right? So therefore, it must be the will of God to heal you. And secondly, his time is now. How do I know? Because he's the great I am, the ever-present one. Not, not so much the I will be, though he will be. One day, you'll be totally healed, okay? But how about tonight? How many need a physical miracle in your body? Wave at me. Just wave at me. Wave excitedly. All right. Two things, two or three things. I want you to make up your mind that you believe in him. There's nothing impossible with God. I don't care if you've had prayer a hundred times. Doesn't matter. Turn the page and let's go again. I want you to believe. Not try to believe like I believe, I believe, but just rest and say, ah, I believe it. It's all true. It's true. 
We're in the end times. It's true. Scripture's full of it there. We just read some of them. It's true. And he has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you and I need to not only know how to receive a healing, but how to heal others in the name of Jesus. By that same Holy Spirit that's in you, you're going to start giving that away to others. Yes, the housewives, the teenagers, the children, and on and on and on we go, right? So stand to your feet with me. Let me get a couple of other things out of the way. Number one, I want you to forgive. You know, forgiveness is one of the greatest grace blockers that I'm aware of. We wrote a little book on it. The grace and forgiveness is so important. It may be that there are people in the room who have never, ever been hurt by another person. If you are, God bless you. Don't feel left out. He'll, you know, life will get around to you. But the rest of us have been hurt. And some of us have been hurt in church and we've been hurt by friends or parents or this or that. But there's only one way out that the Bible gives us. Do you know what that is? Forgive them. Give them a gift the very same way that God gave you a gift. A gift of forgiveness to the undeserving so that the person can go free. And in this case, you go free. Someone said, holding on to unforgiveness is like uh, drinking poison, hoping the other guy will die. That's not how that works. How many need to forgive somebody? Your mother, your father, your family, your husband, your ex, your wife. How about yourself? How about God? Anybody blame God for things? Where were you when I needed you? Kind of thing. Why don't you just say, okay, I let it go right now. Lord, I let it go. I choose to give that person a gift that they do not deserve and they have not earned because that's what you did with me, Lord Jesus. When you came and died on the cross and paid my debt. So I let it go and I come and stand before you with integrity of heart right now. And I ask you to have mercy on me. Now Jesus taught us a very simple thing was this. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means the power of the Holy Spirit is within your reach. And if you can be like a little five-year-old tonight, I want you to reach up your hands and by faith put them into that invisible realm of the Holy Spirit called the kingdom of God and get that fire all over your hands, that electricity of heaven. And I want you to know absolutely it is the will of God to heal you and his time is now. And nothing stops the Holy Spirit. Now bring your own anointed hands down and lay them on your body, wherever your problem is, heads and shoulders, knees and toes, backs, stomachs, hearts, tumors, and say this after me. This healing belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done at the whipping and at the cross, I receive my healing now, right now, in the name of Jesus as a free gift of his love. 
Now breathe it in. And now check yourself. And if you had symptoms of immobility or pain or some way you could tell, just begin to move it and check it out. Sometimes we have to have a proper examination before we know. But some of you can tell right away. Come on, move it, twist, turn, bend, do what you need to do. And if you feel like, wow, God just did something for me, something has just happened, I want you to wave your hand excitedly in the room, just all over the room, start waving your hand at me and saying, God just did something to me. Oh, I give you praise, Lord. I give you thanks, Father. Someone's back just received healing here. You had a serious back issue. The Lord is touching that spine right there. Another shoulder's just come loose right here. Someone with migraine headaches, that's lifting and going off of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for it. Someone's breathing has just opened up. You've been unable to breathe properly for a number of weeks and months, and that's just opened up right here. Whatever it is, take it, friends, because the anointing and the fire of the Holy Spirit is upon you here to set you free from that. If, if you just had something really good happen to you, I want you to run down to the front here and, and tell one of us on, on a microphone quickly. Come on. Quick, quick. Have we got a mic, guys? What happened to you, sir? Bit of just complete fire inside right now, just burning. Ooh, what was your condition? Uh, they said I had a large, enlarged spleen and a fatty liver, and I've, I've been believing and seeing results of an increase in faith. And oh man, I'm just on fire right <laughs> now. Look up here, <laughs> take it. If something good has happened to you, quickly run up here. Come on. What happened, sir? I had plantar fasciitis for the last four or five years. It was like needles in my feet. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> You've had it for like four or five years. Yes, yes. I mean, tonight I came in with needles. Were, it's just difficult. When, when did it go? When did Just that... when you were talking. <laughs> Give Jesus a big shout. Lord, let fire come on that and right there. Fire on those feet in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, we had, it. we had a couple of hundred people raise their hands here. Where are the rest of you? Run down to the front. I want you to give God the praise for this. Quickly, 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 come on. Oh, the Lord is just... What happened? Healed my whole body. My inside to the inside out. He's healed in my mind. They're, they what? Tell me. He's changed my mind. He's, he's healed my body. He's, he healed I got healing in, the, in my what, organs. What was going on before? Kidneys and bladder. Kidneys, bladder? Yeah. And now? I can stand up. I can stand up without bowing over. I'm, I, I, I don't you, feel like I got to pee. I don't feel like I got to pee every second. I can <laughs> run in place without... <laughs> Fire on you right here. What happened to this one? Just tell everyone your name, what my, happened, sweetheart? I was trying to listen to you so hard, and I had a migraine to descend on me after worship, and I was so embarrassed because I couldn't look up because the lights hurt my eyes, and it's never happened before. And I started feeling like I was going to throw up, and it's never had that happen. And I was praying, dear Jesus, help me. I really want your fire. I need to receive something here. And he completely just took it all away. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just ask you to come. Just lay hands on her, Jerry. Fire of God, come on her. No more migraines. What happened to you, my dear? I've had a sinus infection and I've literally been able to smell the infection from inside my nose, like just not been able to breathe without it. And earlier tonight, I just said, Lord, I receive it. I receive your healing. I receive it. And I'm telling you, I can't stop going. How sweet it is, right? How sweet it is. Lay hands on her for me. Fire of God, come on this dear lady right here. Never again, Lord God, that sinus infection goes in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Come on, some more of the other ones. Meet me up here. Let's, let's hear what's going right on. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Tell, tell us your name real quick. My name's Thomas. Uh, Thomas. About, about 20 years ago, I was in a car wreck in the Phoenix Springs that... It pretty much destroyed five vertebrae in my back. Five. And I, I've had trouble being able to bend at the waist at all. And now. Oh my God. Thomas, come on up here. Hey, come on up here. Bring him up, guys. Just stay in this fiery love, everyone. It's the Holy Spirit that causes miracles to happen. It truly is. And when that fire rests on you, as it is, all through this room, miracles upon miracles can happen in the name of Jesus. That's all I know. Tell me about your car accident. when it happened uh -huh. um, I was coming home from work one night and I was in a vehicle that I shouldn't have been driving because of the brakes there was an issue and I was on the way to get the parts to fix it when I run up underneath the back end of another truck and it started to buckle the firewall it tried to pull the seat belt out of the floorboard um, my hand came around the steering wheel and smashed the instrument cluster and I, I have no idea how my glasses come off and it it's a miracle I even walked away from it and you damaged five vertebrae how long ago 2004 did you ever forgive yourself for that exit not really why don't we do it just for fun? Say, Jesus. Jesus. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. For not fixing that car sooner. For not fixing that car sooner. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And just heal me from head to toe. And just heal me from head to toe. Thank you, Lord. What do you feel on you, young man? <laughs> You know, when unforgiveness is in place, it, it can lock things up. That's why it's so important to just let it go. Listen, it won't matter 100 years from now, right? What happened here? I have neck issues, and every time I worship, um, having my head back, I get really bad migraines. I've really struggled tonight with it, but I'm like, I'm just going to worship my Lord, and my muscles are still tight, but my headache's gone. Headache's gone. I'm just hoping that he is healing that my neck because the headache's gone, so. Whew. Let your fire burn on her, Holy Spirit. Burn on her, Holy Spirit. Burn on her, Holy Spirit. Friends, I think we need to do this one more time. The Lord does not want to pass you by. He wants to heal every person in this room, I'm telling you. You know why Jesus took that whipping? You know, he died and paid for our sins with his life, but he suffered, and the book of Isaiah says that uh, he took our sicknesses and bore our infirmities, and by his stripes we are healed. That whipping, 
was paying for healing in part. It wasn't just added torture thrown in at, at the time. No, no. It was in the plan of God that he would take your sickness and your pain, exactly like it says in the book of Matthew. Let's do this one more time, shall we? Reach up to heaven. By faith, put your hands into that fiery presence of the Holy Spirit, up into that electricity of the anointing, and wait on the Lord to renew your strength. Get it all over you. Now bring those hands down and lay them on your body. And we'll say that prayer one more time. This healing belongs to me. It's mine because of what Jesus has done. I receive my healing now as a free gift of his love. Now breathe it in, friends. Pain, go. Blindness, go. Eye problems, go. Eye infections, go. Ear infections, go. Deafness, go. Neck problems, in Jesus' name, go from God's people. And Lord, come and heal them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet and turn us into a mighty harvesting army for the glory of God. And as we go out and heal the sick and cast out demons and show the world the God of love, they're gonna come in by the millions all over the earth, I pray. Now check yourself one more time. Come on, move it, bend it, twist, turn, do what you could not do a moment ago. And if you found that your pain is gone or your mobility is returned or something is telling you, like the swelling is gone, the tumors are gone, you can't find them, whatever it is, wave excitedly, something happened to me this time. Come on, wave excitedly. Thank you over there, that's what I like to see. What else? Anyone else? Up in this, on the side here, at the back, at the back. If something like that has happened to you, quickly, come on down here and we'll take another minute and find out. All right, we had a couple more uh, waiting guys, so who, who oh, also had a story, okay. What happened here, ma'am? I've, I've been having problems with my breathing probably most of my life. Um, and I feel like the breathing is better and I feel like the lungs, like it, my lungs feel better. Take a deep breath for me. Again. How does that feel? It feels good. Wow, Jerry, lay hands on her for me. Father, in, the, in your mighty name, let heaven come down and just Fill those lungs with the fire of God. What's happened to her? Uh, this morning, um, I have really bad sinuses and migraines. And right now, when you said you came and said it again, I could breathe. I wasn't able to breathe from this nostril. And I could breathe, and I, my lungs had just been lifting. And I had back issues. And I couldn't do this before, but now I can't. Come on. Now I can't. Just touch your toes for me. You couldn't do that before. I couldn't do that because I had a fall many years ago and I was a dancer. Uh -huh. I was a ballerina and I wasn't able to do that. I went to the chiropractor two weeks ago and I could not do that. Guys, right there, lay hands on her and just bless her right there. Come on. Over here. What happened, ma'am? When I came tonight, my hands were so sore I couldn't close them. And I get gangling cysts in my joints, and it's very painful. And I couldn't even clap. It, it's gone. It's just gone. It's gone. <laughs> While you were, when you were praying, my hands just started tingling, and the, it was, they were on fire. You see, that's, that's it, isn't it? 
Yes. That's what we're talking about, the Holy Spirit. Now listen, if, if that condition ever tries to come back, I'm not saying it will, but sometimes the enemy tries, right? I don't want you to fight the devil. He belongs under your feet, yeah? So I want you to just say, no, nope, I'm not having that. No Jesus more. healed me and I'm keeping my healing. I'm keeping it. And just tell him to get lost and Gone. keep that healing. Fire on this lady right here in Jesus' name. What happened here, guys? Uh, so I've had numbness and, and tingling in my arm where it, I can not feel like when I would touch my arm from, from a drug overdose many years ago. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can definitely feel uh, my arm. Uh, I can feel my arm. Uh, my, my, my natural mind is uh, trying to catch up. Uh, so, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yay. Yay. And I hope you forgive yourself for that joint that damaged you. Oh, Holy Spirit. God has touched my heart. I have had a feel, but I know I was healed tonight. I've had vertigo. I was healed tonight. I've even had a thumb that I could not use. I've been to rehab if you've never had any problems with any limbs you know what I mean yeah <laughs> but he has healed my thumb <laughs> and I thank him for it thank you for that Jesus oh, lay hands on her guys fire on her fill her up Completely, completely, completely. What is this? Yeah, it didn't happen tonight, but I recently had COVID. And the very night I experienced my symptoms, I started writing down healing scriptures. And I began reciting them over myself. Four days after I began reciting those scriptures, I was completely healed of COVID. Come on. Fill him up, Lord. Fresh, 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 fresh. All right, let's do another one. One more. I'm building strength, exercising, and working out, um, preparing for a missions trip to Nepal. And my back was really hurting, and the Lord's been ministering. But it was still having to take a stand and keep doing and hurting. And I just really answered the prayer of, yeah. Step forth in faith and believe that it's done. It's I know. completely, there's nothing it's there. It's so fantastic, isn't it? Sorry. So grateful. Oh, Lord, bless her, bless her, bless her. Well, friends, he wants you now to get an absolute download of the fire of the Holy Spirit. I think some of you have heard my story, but Many, many years ago, back in, in November of 1973, we had the privilege to go to Argentina. We went to visit the revival there. And while we were there, we visited Claudio Friesen's church. And he offered to pray for all of the foreigners. And my wife and I went up, you know, two nights actually in a row. And that dear brother prayed for me and my life has never been the same because there was an impartation of the Holy Spirit and fire that came into my life. And I knew something was different. And immediately when we got home, we saw things changing and things changing. And that impartation came from heaven and I want it tonight with all my heart for all of you because it launched us into so many things, revival, and so many people got saved and so many more got healed because of the anointing. And so I want you to believe for it with me. And we have one of our ladies in our church, she's actually on our board now, 
And she came through years and years of revival and we prayed with her and many prayed for their Carol and myself and others and nothing happened. But one time we were on an outreach mission trip to Africa and she was on that trip with us and I had the whole audience do what you're about to do right now. Reach up and then lay hands on yourself and believe for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come on you. And you know, the fire of the Holy Spirit came on Heidi that night and she got absolutely wrecked. She just laughed for about two, three months, solid without, she just couldn't stop laughing. It was so good. But, but that was only part of it. It just put a fire within her to love Jesus and serve him like never before. How many want an upgrade in the anointing and the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon you? Reach up to heaven. Put your hands into that fiery presence of the Holy Spirit and get that glory all over you right now. Now bring your own hands down as though they were the hands of Jesus. You can loan your hands to him and lay hands upon yourself and speak it out and say, receive the fiery love of God right now in the name of the Lord. And Lord, let fire come on these dear people in the name of Jesus, all over this room, the glory of God, the fire of his love, burning upon them right down into their inner being. Lord, we drink it, we breathe it, we take it in. It's absolutely our inheritance. It is the Father's promise to you, the Holy Spirit and fire. Now I want you to turn to one of your friends or your spouse or someone you know beside you and lay hands on each other and send it into them. Rise up in your authority and send that anointing into them in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit. and everything that is not of God. We bind it and we command it to go from you right now in Jesus' name. Every deceptive thing, every counterfeit thing, everything not of God, go from God's people now in the name of the Lord as Jesus Christ is glorified in this room. To you be the praise. To you be the praise, O oh Lord. That's right, keep taking it, keep going, guys. Keep going, we can end with this. Guys, if you could clear the front, I would love to pray for all of the, of the evangelists in the school. What do you call that? The boot camp graduates, yeah. Boot camp and graduates. Yeah, just come and line up, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray for you guys because I just think it's so fantastic what you're doing. Yeah, real quick, if you've graduated from the boot camp any year, just come make your way down front. Just begin to line up right there. Don't worry about the people on the ground. Ushers, if you can, the you guys just help line some of the boot camp. Come bring them right down in the middle. Make your way right down to the middle. All boot campers, just make your way down right now. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come right down to the middle. Mark, come bring it down to the middle a little bit more. Bring it down a little... Come make your way, come make your way. If, if you're still here, just be believing God for a fresh outpouring for evangelists. These evangelists, they travel all over the world. They're seeing tens of thousands come to Jesus by the week. We average right around 20,000 salvations a week at Christ for All Nations because these men and women that you see up here, they travel across the globe. So if you're just in the stands right now, just begin to stretch your hands and believe a mighty outpouring for them. And all you guys watching at home on the live stream, I want you to do this, of course, with us. 
I want you to lay hands on yourself and believe that it is the will of God to heal you. It absolutely is. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh. Yeah. And so, Lord, all of these wonderful boot camp graduates, in Jesus' name, let your glory begin to fall upon them now, I pray. Let it fall upon them now. I think he took my briefcase, right? Yes, we got it just down here. That goes in the briefcase. Yeah. Just begin to receive, Keep receive, coming, receive, 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 receive. Receive. Jesus, fill this place. Jesus, fill this place. Jesus, fill this place. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Catchers, catchers, come we have some ushers, some catchers, come us. right down here. Oh, fire Get right wind, behind them. Come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Right on
prayed for and you felt the fire of God touch your life, how many people know that fire is contagious? And if you're a graduate right now and you feel the fire of God on you and in your hands, what I want you to do is I want you to turn around right now. I want you to find a current, current boot camp student and what I want you to do is we want to release the fire into every person in this room. So what you're going to do right now is you're going to begin to go out and you're going to be lay, begin to lay hands right now. So if that's you right now in the audience right now, if you want the fresh fire of God, I want you to put your hands up right now. These graduates have gone across the world. They've seen thousands of saved. They've seen the fire falls in field, but the fire is about to fall right here in Pensacola tonight. And right now, I release every graduate right now to go out right now and begin to start praying for people. Fire of God fall. Fire of God fall in this place. Right now, begin to go out. Begin to go out. Find someone with their hands raised right now and begin to start praying for the fire of God to touch their life. Charles, get out there, man. I see you. Get out there and start praying for people. Come on. Come on. Jesus, across this room, everyone's about to get. I need some graduates right now. I need you to climb those stairs. I need you to get up there right now. I need some graduates right now. Begin to go. Go, 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 go. Don't wait. Don't wait. Woo. Jesus, Jesus, fill this place right now. Fire and wind. Come on. Come on. Jesus, Jesus.
your name. Come on, guys. He's not done. He's not done. Holy Spirit, come. Come on, if you want more, just put up both your hands right now. If you want more, just put up both of your hands right now. Holy Spirit, we earnestly seek for you. We desire your presence. God, I thank you that right now you are pouring out callings. I feel like some of you guys are going to get hot feet. You're called to the mission field. You're an evangelist. Maybe you've been running from your calling, but God says, tonight's the night. It's all over. All the ambition that was outside of God, it's over. He's sending you out. He's sending you out. Jesus, we thank you. Lift up your hands, guys, if you want more of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we earnestly seek for you right now in the name of Jesus. We ask for your presence to be released on these people, God. I thank you for the power of God in Jesus' name that is falling in this place right now. I thank you that as these people lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover in Jesus' name. I thank you that they will prophesy words of life, words of encouragement in Jesus' name. They will lift up their voice like the roar of a lion and the chains of bondage and the chains of addiction will come falling off of people. I thank you right now. Lift up both your hands. Holy Spirit, come. Stir yourself up. Ask Him. Ask Him. Ask Him. We have not because we ask, ask not. Ask Him right now. Fill up your people. Fill up your people in Jesus' name. Spirit of Santo, Vena Key. 